It's been 6 months since I stopped playing Genshin Impact, and 4 months since Wuthering Waves took its place on my PC. I was one of the first people to start the game on the day it launched, and I have footage of the gameplay recorded in the first hour of its debut. So after 4 months of playing through Wuthering Waves and experiencing its mechanics and gameplay, I decided to finally make this video to share my opinion on both games, and which one you should be playing in your free time. Before we continue, in this video I will absolutely compare Wuthering Waves and Genshin Impact. They are the only two open world story based anime gacha games that are worth looking at and they are competing for the same player base. If you don't like seeing comparisons between games of the same genre, feel free to click off right now. So, without any further ado... Right, the combatants are set and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! To begin, I feel like mentioning the setting of Wuthering Waves is crucial to set a couple of things straight. Because, between that and Genshin Impact setting, the difference could not be any more apparent. Wuthering Waves setting is that of an apocalyptic world, where humanity is trying their best to fight against the dangers of the apocalypse just to ensure their survival. Whereas in Genshin Impact, well, I mean sure there is the Abyss Order trying to do Abyss Order things and the Fatui are gathering the Infinity Stones or something, but like, there is no imminent world ending threat that is actively trying to destroy all of humanity. So the game's setting ends up being much lighter. Literally, the game is bright as fuck compared to Wuthering Waves, what the hell? Anyways, let's talk story first because I want to settle a few disputes that the comment section of my previous video on Genshin Impact were kind enough to bring up. When I say story, I mean physically the events which occur in the main quests of the game. I don't mean the fucking books under Lisa's bed or Scaramucci's research papers. I mean the events which transpire with the main character and their journey across the world. So please, I don't want anyone to come into my comment section and start moaning about how much lore Genshin Impact has, how somehow that makes it have the best story of all time, blah blah blah. Now the reason why I say it's crucial to separate story from words hidden away in books that literally no one will read in a normal playthrough is because that is classed as telling, not showing. And it's a cheap narrative trick to make the players think that the world is much more alive than it actually is. Which isn't wrong, but I personally don't like that method of storytelling. So, story. Like I said in my previous video, Genshin Impact's main story instantly lost me when the Traveler immediately forgot the urgency behind looking for their lost sibling in order to become every nation's errand boy and the Jesus who descended from the heavens to solve all their problems. Only after the second encounter with the sibling did the story pick up again only to lose me immediately after when it goes back to tossing everyone else's problem at you. Now the reason why I'm mentioning this isn't because I think the MC shouldn't be nice and help people, but they should be doing it in a more realistic way. Like why the fuck am I fetching pizza for Ayaka when there's a coup against the Shogun and the plants? Wuthering Waves in my opinion handles its quests and storytelling much better. The rover is thrust into the world without any memories of their past, with their ultimate goal being to regain their memories and know why they were sent here. Do you want to guess how long it took for the game to start answering those questions? One arc. One main story arc. Imagine that. Now, we mostly know who we are, our purpose, and where to hit next to find out more. Whereas in Genshin Impact, you have to do the entirely unrelated Mondstadt storyline just for Venti to tell you, I don't know. Try Li Wei, I guess. You go to Li Wei, and it's the same shit again. Zong Li tells you, I don't know, try Inazuma, I guess. Anyways, the point is, if you want a long, boring, unskippable story that doesn't pick up until you are already worm food, play Genshin. If you want a more hands-on story that knows where the fuck it's going and actually gives you answers rather than more questions, play Withering Waves. Next, let's talk about gameplay. For Genshin, you have uh, y you have... Elemental reactions! There's nothing you gotta do in that game except elemental reactions. There's no having to learn a kit, you just need to get the reactions. You do freaking... If you Dude, when Zhang Li came out, you didn't have to worry about mechanics for like a fucking year. Okay? When, when Gan Yu came out, same thing. You just combine... Uh, oh my god, I forget the name of that character. The one that has the water swords. You combine him with Gan Yu and you're just freezing everything. There, you literally didn't need to do shit. And then Zhang Li on the other team, you just didn't take any damage. You can sit 
in all the mechanics and you literally wouldn't take any damage. What? Did you actually expect me not to make fun of how ridiculously outmatched Genshin is in this aspect? You wanna run around? It takes stamina. You wanna jump? It takes stamina. You wanna climb? It takes stamina and two years of your maximum life expectancy. There is no perfect dodging, there is no parrying, there is no combat system. You are just spamming skills and hoping to out DPS the enemies. Meanwhile, in Wuthering Waves, Yeah, it's not even close. Wuthering Waves' gameplay is infinitely more fun and has much more depth than that of Genshin. It's almost not fair to compare them, so let's just move on. The gacha system, and already the base rates of obtaining a 5 star character is higher in Wuthering Waves than in Genshin Impact by 0.2%. That means you are one third more likely to pull a 5 star from a regular summon in Wuthering Waves compared to Genshin. Moreover, you need 10 less pulls to hit the first heart pity on Wuthering Waves, because you only need 80 pulls for guaranteed 5 star in that game, while in Genshin, you need 90. That's not all, the weapon banner in Wuthering Waves not only has a higher chance to drop the 5 star with a ratio of 0.8 versus 0.7 in Genshin, it also has no chance of giving you a useless 5 star weapon you'll never use. If you get a 5 star on the weapon banner in that game, it'll always be the featured weapon. Whereas in Genshin, there is the fate system and the chance that you might not get the weapon that you need and all that crap which is... Wow dude, I didn't even realize how spoiled Wuthering Waves got me. This is without even mentioning the free 5 stars Wuthering Waves will give you for literally no reason except that it wants you to have fun. If you've played since launch, you will have at least 5 guaranteed 5 star characters and a guaranteed 5 star weapon. One from just logging in and first month rewards. 2 from the beginner banners, 1 Xiang Liao who was given away for free in the last event, uh, and 1 limited 5 star if you played through the story and gotten your login rewards. Remind me how many 5 stars Genshin Impact gave its players since its launch? 1. Just 1. But hey, I don't know what else you want me to say. In my opinion, the only reason people are still playing Genshin Impact at all is because of 3 main reasons. Number 1. Sunk cost fallacy. Players have already spent too much time and money on their accounts, so even though they know they would be much better off playing Wuthering Waves, they won't do it because they're already too deep within the rabbit hole. Which is fine, I mean, to each their own, but you're still missing out. Number two, they physically cannot play Wuthering Waves. One of the main glaring issues with Wuthering Waves is that it's only available on PC and mobile devices. Now a PS5 port is in the works, but nothing is guaranteed yet for the Xbox, which is why Genshin is superior in that regard, I'll give it that. Number 3, they simply enjoy the more relaxed, simplistic and bright setting of Genshin, which is understandable, and in the end remains a matter of preference. With that being said, in an objective clash analysis between the two games, Wuthering Waves comes out on top as an overall better game, and if you haven't already, you should absolutely check it out. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And if you're feeling generous, check out my other videos as well as my Patreon down in the description below. This was Imaginary Watcher, and I'll see you around.